Now on the bottom of search results, we have the same print and email. If I click on the print button, let's see if it's the right view. If I click on print, it's going to open the print screen. Now I selected some listings, but I can change my mind once I get to the print screen. So it gives me the option to just print a single property. And then I can pick which property I want to print. Or I can go in and I can uh, print a selected property. It tells me I have three of them. Just like up here, it tells me I have three. Or I can say, you know what, I just want to print them all. I can do that. 26 of them. What do I want to print? This is called a grid. So I can go in and I can print this actual format here. I can also print reports. And as Jay showed you, if I need to uh, want to print two different reports, one for me, one for my client, you, this is where the directions uh, are here. And this is the only time you have to hold down control yet to, to select something. So I will print two reports at the same time. I can print the history, and I can print either one of the history reports with it. Or I can print the search criteria and the statistics along with the reports that are going to print. I could cancel out of this. I can preview. I can kind of do a print preview there. I can save these reports as PDFs, or I can tell it to print. Now, the reports that are in Tempo 5 are what is called fixed format. On this particular report, so on a long all remarks report, every field is in exactly the same location on every report. So you'll always know that that field is in this location. And then enough space is allocated to print the maximum number of choices or the maximum number of characters allowed for that particular field. So if you have the remarks field and you're allowed 528 characters, there's enough room left on the report to print 528 characters, whether you type that many or not. There's enough space to fill it in. So it's a fixed format report. We, I can also email my uh, reports. So you click on email, it gives you basically the same screen. Once again, I can change my mind if I wish. I can email a single report, pick the report or the property. I can uh, email the three selected, or I can email all the 26 visible records. And then what is it that I want to email? I can email any report from the system. The currently, you can do on the customer reports, and the reason for that is because the customer reports do not have the confidential information that's reserved only for agents. Show agent remarks, the compensation fields, those are confidential information. Well, you can email any report that's in here, but what your client will see is the field name, but nothing behind it. There will be no data in the field for compensations, for show agent remarks. It'll just be blank. So you can email the report, but the confidential fields are still not populated on that emailed report. I go ahead and say OK. I can type in as many email addresses as I want. Or over here, if I have a list of contacts, all of your prospects start out as contacts. So you may have a whole list of contacts or prospects. You can go in and click here. Your email, their email address is almost always part of your contact information. And I just go over here and I say, OK, I want this one. And I click on 2. And I say, OK, and that email address is already in there. Very easy to do. I can also go in and I can personalize this email if I choose. So instead of sending just a, a generic type email, I can actually go in and personalize it if I wish. Just like we have now, there is no sent folder. You will either have to send yourself a copy of the email, or you'll have to print the confirmation page, which comes up next, telling you that your email has been sent. So when you go to send it, you will get, in this case, I would get a copy of it, and or I would have to print the confirmation page. So that's our email uh, and print. Now let me show you one last thing. This grid right here is our default system grid. But you can change that. We used to call them, in the current system, they were custom reports where you could pick what column headings, what uh, columns do you want to show on a report. You can do that very easily here. It's called a grid. So I have one uh, that I created, and I, I click on it. It takes the same 26 listings, but displays a completely different set of information on it because I chose the listing agent name and the listing office phone number. So now I have exactly the same 26 listings, have the same three selected, but now I have completely different information. 
You can create those uh, grids and you can just go back and forth between them. Notice uh, if you have any appraisers in here, the 1004 MC form is already in here in Tempo 5 and I will get the directions out for that. Uh, I just got them last week and I haven't had a chance to look at them, but uh, there's the form already. So we already have that grid in here. But I can change right back to the grid I had. So you're never stuck on a screen. You always have a way back to where you were or back to something different. If you click on edit, but uh, the icon and it's not your listing, there's a close button on that screen. So you just close that when you're right back where you were. So there's always a way out of a screen. All right, let's talk about how you add listings into the MLS. You go, if you are going from the home page, it's very easy. So you logged in, you need to add a listing. You can go up and click on add edit listings, or you can click modify or add new listings. You'll also notice there's one for modify or add listing images. So I can go directly to that screen if I wish. So I click on it, and it loads the first page of the add screen. Now notice the incomplete listings are right in front of you. They're kind of in your face. You can't start an in a listing and then forget you started it and start over again. It's right here, and all you do is select it, and it will load it, and you finish it. If I want to enter a new listing, I click right here. The first thing that comes up is where you pick a, a property category. No more, there's only one screen, so you don't have a short screen and a long screen. And on the short screen, if you forgot to change the property category at the very top and you filled the whole little short screen in, you'd have to start all over and do it again to change property categories. Here you're picking the category first. So if it's something other than residential, you do is drop the drop down and you pick whatever your category is. If it's residential, all you do is click you know, on the OK button. Then the next thing that will come up is that auto populate screen. There are up to 13 fields that will be auto populated into your listing. You don't have to worry about it. One of them is the legal description. So you don't have to type that legal anymore. It'll uh, come up. You can look up your property. You know which property you're getting ready to add. So the easiest thing is to search for it by address. You also can search for it by owner's name or by the schedule number if you wish. So if you put in whatever the criteria is and you click on OK, the system goes out into the realist tax records and finds whatever property matches whatever search item you stuck in there. Whether there's one listing found or multiple listings found, you would uh, select the listing. This screen is showing you the fields that will be auto-populated. So there's up to uh, 13 of them, depending on whether the data is in Realist or not. So I'm going to uh, work on that listing, so I click on the Populate button, and it goes in and it filled in that data. So those uh, required fields have been changed to green, and they're already ready to go. When you are adding listings, it's the same thing as doing a search. You have the same exact one line uh, per, or one field per line. You have drop downs to make your selections. You have the magnifying glass to uh, do uh, advanced searches and so on. There's a lot of uniformity in Tempo 5. When you see a list of status codes, it's the same list all the time. So you never see, oh, on this screen, I'm only going to see these statuses, and on this screen, I'm only going to see these. You are going to get the same list of statuses. So when I go to add, you could pick any status you want. However, it will only let you save a listing as active. So the list is there, but the business rules still say you must add a listing as an active listing. You tab from one field to the next, and you go down, and you just start adding your data in. Now I'm seeing some of those uh, red fields. So I go in here, notice the question mark, that will be a help screen. So for example, on the listing price, maybe the help screen will say something like, when you're adding a listing, you have to put all the zeros. You can't just put 200 and expect it to be, it, no, it's 200,000. It would put it in as $200. So you would have to put all the zeros. So maybe that's what our help screen would say in that particular field. Uh, dates, you have the calendars. Just on any date field, you'll always see your calendars. Uh, you'll have sub-area, you can do it exactly the same as, you d as I did on search. You can either spell it out, and if it's spelled exactly the way that we have it in our table, and that comes directly from the legal description, it, it's just fine. Or you can search through the entire huge list, or you can go to the advanced search and look it up and click on it, and it'll just input it for you. Uh, street name is the same thing, has the same advanced search. When you are doing um, entering fields, 
for example, you come to this one, it shows you the uh, description plus the code. It also tells you how many you've selected and how many are the maximum number that you can select. So it tells me I can select six max, and as I'm doing this, it's telling me how many I've selected. Then I tab to go to the next uh, field and show agent remarks. When you have a free type field like this one, when you mouse over it, when you click on it, uh, it shows you what field it is and then tells you how many characters. Now what's new about this is as I'm typing in here, it's counting down. No more are you going to be typing along all of a sudden it just stops because you reached the end. So now, just pay attention right up here. It's telling you, well, I only have 10 characters left. What am I going to put in those last 10 characters? So it's counting it down for you so you don't have to uh, go backwards and try to take something out and so we can put some more in. So any of the uh, free type fields also have the spell checker. Although you guys abbreviate so much, I'm not sure how good the spell checker is going to be on that. So, you know, I've seen a lot of abbreviations in the remarks. When you go down a little bit further, uh, we've added uh, a new field that is um, whether the uh, adjacent lot is available. So you come down and there's one that uh, it's right by the schools and it will say adjacent parcel available, yes, no, don't know. So that will take care of those situations where you have two lots available that can be sold individually or together, but you can't put them in the MLS as three different things. So you have to put them in either as two individuals or one combined. But now if you put it in as an individual uh, lot, you can say the adjacent one is for sale. Bathrooms is uh, different in uh, the way that you enter them. There's no more five comma Fs or F comma F, and if you've got the comma, you end up with one of those bathrooms and not two of them. So here what we've done in Temple 5 is that we have listed the field or the, the floor. So we have uppers, mains, lowers, and basements. And then each one of the floors has the, the, the four types of bathrooms. So if I'm here and I have a five-piece bath, I just type a one, tab down. And if I have a full, I type a one. Now notice they're all required fields. So you're going to put zeros in all the rest of them. So you're just going to start at the top, put zeros for anything that, that doesn't floor, doesn't have that type of bathroom, and just go down the whole list. On the bottom of the screen, that's where we have those new green fields. It's building green. So if you have a property that you're listing that has been built green, has a HERS rating, has a LEED rating, and so on, is certified, then you can go ahead and enter that data here. Uh, we'd, we'd put these in uh, at uh, in conjunction with the U.S. Green Building Council and the Colorado Governor's Office. They're trying to get the MLSs to add all the green fields so that people will know properties that are built green. The only one that is required there is whether you've uploaded a green features addendum. So that one is required. Uh, you, uh, um, I've had uh, several questions about what happens if I'm colorblind and I can't tell the difference between the red ones and the green ones. Good question, actually. So if you can't tell whether this is a green uh, R or a red R, then watch over down on the bottom right where it has the number of input fields, the number of required fields, and how many required fields are still missing. Now, if there's two required fields missing, I can just scroll the screen looking for a red field unless I can't tell the difference. Then what you want to do is just go over here to submit. And what it does, it says, whoa, you missed required fields. And it takes that cursor and puts it right in the required field that's missing information. So in my case, the listing price, I would have to literally go in and put a price in. Then if I had still another one and I needed to figure out which one it was, hit submit again. When you have all of the required fields in and all the data is in your listing, when you click on submit, it then uh, saves it gives it an MLS number and takes you to the edit screen automatically.